Our scripture reading this morning is 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 34 to chapter 16, verse 13. It can be found on page 277 in the Pew Bible. Then Samuel left Ramah, but Saul went up to his home in Gibeah of Saul. Until the day Samuel died, he did not go to see Saul again, though Samuel mourned for him. And the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. Then the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears about it, he'll kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Elab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the board looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Then Jesse had Shammah passed by. But Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There are still the youngest, Jesse answered. He's tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. May the Lord add a blessing to this reading, hearing, and understanding of his word. Amen. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Having taught Sunday school and volunteering in the nursery for over 20 years here at Advent, I've been privileged to watch a generation grow into young adulthood. I have treasured memories of Cora, Tina, Richard, and Nicholas Hernandez, William and David Castile, Francis and Danica Daylog, and so many others who are now young adults. I remember Jackson and Elise Borgon when Jackson could take any small little piece of material and create a cape, transforming himself into a superhero. And Elise, Elise could take plastic vegetables and make a seven course meal and present it proudly. I remember when Noah and Elijah Isbell's favorite movie star was a guy who lived in a pineapple under the sea, SpongeBob SquarePants. These kids are now, um, some of them are college graduates, some are married, some are even parents themselves. It has given me a great amount of joy to be a part of their church family as they approach and enter into adulthood. Maturing into responsible adults involves making good decisions, and that requires accepting and developing the gift of, of discernment. In 1 John 4, 1, we read, test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. According to the New Testament, discernment is not optional. For the believer, it is required. 
This morning's scripture reading is about the mature prophet Samuel, hearing and discerning the words of God. But more than any other prophet, through the scriptures, we have known Samuel from even before the time when he was born. In, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, we learn that his mother Hannah prayed diligently and desperately year after year for a child to be born to her and her husband Elkanah. Hannah even vowed that if God would answer her prayer with the son, she would dedicate him to the service of God. To Hannah's credit, she kept her promise and brought Samuel when he was only about three years old to the temple to serve the priest Eli. We might think that Samuel, being apprenticed to a priest at that young age, was automatically given the gift of discernment. But scripture tells us otherwise. According to commentaries I have researched, Samuel was somewhere between the ages of 10 and 15 when he first heard the voice of God calling to him. Chapter 3, verse 7 tells us, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. So three times Samuel thought Eli was calling him in the night. I have an amplified uh, version of the Bible with commentaries written by Joyce Meyer. In it, she gives a unique understanding of this particular phenomenon. She writes, Samuel was accustomed to hearing Eli's voice. Therefore, when God called to him, it sounded like Eli. Sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me, God wants us to listen to him too. So he speaks to us through a voice that we will recognize. Sometimes it may sound like our own voice. Sometimes it might sound like the voice of someone we know. But the point is that the voice will always bring peace when God speaks to us. She goes on to say, God speaks in our hearts through peace or a lack of it. If we have peace, we may proceed with our intended action. But if we do not have peace, that is a word from God to stop. God also speaks through wisdom and discernment and common sense. He speaks through his word and never tells us to do anything that does not agree with his word. In chapter 3, verse 19, we read, the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of his words fall to the ground. As Samuel served God by serving Eli, he became more attuned to God's instruction, and the people of Israel honored Samuel as a prophet. He not only listened to God's instructions, but he revealed everything that God told him, even if the message was disastrous. This is a reminder to us that we must be prepared to know God's word and speak it truthfully, even if the truth is hard for the listener to accept. As Christians, we are accountable for leading others in the paths of God's truth. We are not, however, ac accountable for their response. Eventually, Samuel became too old to lead Israel as a judge. His sons, unfortunately, did not follow in his footsteps. They accepted bribes and perverted justice. The people decided they wanted to have a king rule them. Samuel warned them about the consequences of giving absolute power and authority to any individual. But the people wanted to be just like other nations who were ruled by a king. I want you to notice now this was not God's plan as what Israel was in effect doing was rejecting God's kingship. The result of their rejection was that in obedience to God's word, Samuel anointed Saul as God instructed. But Samuel was not the military leader the people expected him to be. He tended to act rashly and go against God's commands. In fact, in chapter 15, we read that Paul disobeyed, I'm sorry, Saul, disobeyed God's command to destroy all of the Amalekites. And Samuel had to finish that battle by slaying Agag, the king of the Amalekites. Saul had wisdom as far as knowing what God expected of him, but his pride and his confidence in his own decision-making kept him from obeying completely. 
His excuse when Samuel confronted him sounded a lot like, but everyone was pressuring me into doing this. Does that sound familiar? There are voices all around us pressuring us to do things that are not acceptable in God's eyes. That is why discernment is so critical. Satan has a stronghold in this world, and we need to understand how desperate he is to enslave us to sin. God's word is a precious gift, which provides the needed discernment about every issue in life. 2 Peter 1, 3-4 reads, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. And so even while Saul remained on the throne, God again spoke to Samuel, instructing him to go to Bethlehem, because one of Jesse's sons was to be anointed as the future king. Understandably, Samuel would have rather not been involved in this plan, knowing that Saul would place his own kingship over Samuel's life. On the other hand, the people, knowing that Samuel had destroyed Agag, they were not immediately welcoming of Samuel as they trembled at his coming and asked, Do you come peaceably? Nevertheless, being blessed with discernment and an, and an obedient spirit, Samuel did what God instructed, and accordingly God gave Samuel a plan that would fulfill God's will and also keep Samuel safe. Under these type of circumstances, listening for God's direction and not giving in to our own first impressions might be challenging. When Jesse's son Eliab was presented, Samuel immediately thought, oh, this is it, this is the one, because Eliab looked the part. But God is not interested in a person's appearance, but what is in his or her heart. One by one, seven of Jesse's sons were considered, but the Lord did not choose any of them. And then the youngest son, the one considered to be too inconsequential to even be presented to Samuel, was brought in from the fields where he was tending his father's sheep. How unexpected, and yet in hindsight, how appropriate that God would choose the one who cared for the sheep to lead his people. You see, David knew from experience what it meant to trust God in the face of danger. He was responsible for protecting those sheep from lions and bears, and he did so with faith and courage. In the words of Psalm 78, 70 through 72, Asaph wrote these words, He chose David his servant and took him from the sheep pens. From tending the sheep, he brought him to be the shepherd of his people Jacob, of Israel, his inheritance. And David shepherded them with integrity of heart. With skillful hands, he led them. Wisdom and discernment are, God's give, are God-given gifts, but they must be consciously developed and nurtured. Every Christian is responsible for studying God's word, praying for guidance, discernment, and understanding, and especially spending time listening for the voice of God. We might hear God through our own conscience, so we must carefully guard against our conscience becoming desensitized to the violence, immoral acts, and injustices we are constantly subjected to. We need to know and profess the doctrines that we believe in and encourage one another in our faith journey. Pastor Eve and Brian and Jackson, the former Cape Crusader, Borgon, have been representing Advent this past week at the Desert Southwest Annual Conference. As issues have been discussed and voted on at this conference, we pray for discernment in the hearts and minds of all of the leaders of the United Methodist Church. We are proud of Jackson's willingness to participate as a youth representative and pray that this has been an enlightening experience for him. We look forward to both Brian and Jackson's reports when they come back so that we as a congregation understand the issues that were brought forth and the decisions that have been made. 
God desires to give the gifts of wisdom and discernment to each one of his beloved children. But we need to come to him in prayer and make our desire for these gifts known. In the words of James 1.5, 1, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Amen.